for all those current and future real estate investors that have or want to own multiple properties, this video is for you as it revolves around qualification for multiple loans and how that works. Now, perfect timing because it's about tax season and yes, nobody wants to pay taxes, especially with their multi-units. So they try to write off as much as humanly possible, causing a lot of people to get denied for buying another property. The reason we're doing this video is because we've come across a lot of that right now. Um, and then especially if you're gonna be filing taxes here shortly, uh, you really need an expert to review those taxes uh, from the lending side to tell you like, hey, what you're doing is going to work or it's not going to work. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to be messing around with amending your tax returns. And let me tell you, that can take some time uh, to complete that. So if you guys wanna connect with us, uh, we have our link down below in the description. Uh, you schedule time with us, happy to go over your situation. So let's kind of dive into it. Uh, depending if you're trying to use your VA home loan or not, right? you can't have multiple VA home loans. So sometimes when people are going into this investment strategy, uh, the VA home loan is phenomenal, but there might be other loan products that you can layer onto this uh, to make it as easy as possible to own multiple properties, okay? The VA loan has a cap when you have multiple VA home loans. So at some point, you're going to exhaust your entire benefits. And there's other loan products like FHA loans and conventional loans that offer low down payment options. And it's really going to be driven by, are you looking at trying to be, a, let's say, have multiple single family homes? Are you looking at condos, which do have a lot of restrictions around renting or they can very easily? Uh, so you don't really see a lot of people investing with condos. Uh, and then the other one is multifamilies, which is probably one of the best ones because that's where you can have uh, multiple units within one property pin. Uh, and it just allows you to gain the most rental or the most income generation off of any loan product out there, especially when you compare it against a single family residence. But not in every area do you have um, multifamily. So a lot of people that will focus in on the single family realm, right? So for a good example is that let's say uh, you want to buy a four unit building. Well, Fannie, or, uh, Fannie Mae came, recently came out with a 5% down on a multifamily, which, think it, which is an actual phenomenal product. Uh, so you can do a 5% down on a four unit building. Eight months later or 12 months later, you can then use a FHA loan, do a 3.5% down, buy another four unit building or a single family home, and then finish it all off with buying it with a single family home. But once you get past that piece, uh, you can still use the same products right over and over again, but it's going to be very dependent on your situation. So all of this uh, combined with your finances is going to let you do what you want to do or not do what you want to do, depending on your tax returns. Again, we just had a bunch of phone calls with people. They've completely disqualified themselves due to not wanting to pay property taxes or the other pieces that accounts are some accounts are really good at uh, doing tax returns and they'll just show off a million things in write-offs and then all that money that you thought you can use to qualify, you won't be able to do so. Uh, so I'm going to break that down here next. And another important thing on using your VA home loan benefits is that if you're using the VA home loan to purchase a, another property, your departing residence is automatically offset with what's called the market rent, okay? It's important to note because this next section is not going to be a departing residence. This is only applies to departing residents. You don't need a rental agreement. You don't need a property management agreement. You don't need anything to offset that mortgage payment other than a realtor giving you a competitive market analysis showing that it's a strong rental market and you can do what you want to do, right? And purchase another property, not, not a big deal. So now let's talk about current investment properties uh, and how that relates to your taxes. So one of the most important parts just off the bat is that you you have to have two full years of taxable income 
on your rental property in order to use either that rental income. All right, that's a very important part because if you've only been doing it for a year, you show income, a lender is going to use none of it to qualify you for a new property. So that's why sometimes for veterans, it's kind of about the timeline of doing stuff. We'll have people that will buy a property in, let's say, January, and then buy another property in November or December. So then they don't have to show the taxes, show them uh, not having owners or, or not uh, having the rental income show up on their taxes. And if they're using the V loan, let's say for their second loan, then we're just offsetting the uh, resident's income with just the market analysis, which makes it super easy. So that's how they're able to buy two properties in the same year relatively quick because uh, there's really no time limit on how long you have to live in the property. Unless it's an FHA loan, then they look at a year. But if you have a VA loan or conventional loan, you can have life situations or circumstances and you're and then able to do so. But that two-year part is pretty important to understand. Now, with the way that rental income is calculated off your tax returns, and this is us, something also that's extremely important, is that you will file those tax returns under your, uh, under your personal tax returns under Schedule E. Because sometimes we'll have people put it on Schedule C and you basically like will have to create, do an amendment to your taxes. It's just a complete nightmare to do it. So Schedule E, unless you have an LLC, then you basically file it under LLC and then it'll pass through to your property. Uh, but that can also screw up a lot of things. Uh, so uh, let's just go over how a lender actually is going to qualify you for that income. So that you take the total rental income for the year. Uh, you subtract out the total expenses and then you add back any depreciation or depletion and that's your income. So just because you're claiming you make $3,000 a month on a rental income, that's that's not even going to be close to what a lender is going to use unless you just have no expenses against the property. But man, every time I look at people's taxes, they have a ton of expenses. So even if they make $3,000 a month, they could actually end up being negative on income. And that's the crazy part. Not only do you get hit with the payment, but you can also get hit with negative income on top of that, even if you have a W-2 job, right? So uh, you'll notice it on your tax returns when you file it because you're going to have additional uh, deductions off your income. A lender is going to remove those so you actually qualify for even less if you have negative income. But that's why... Working with someone experienced is going to be able to walk you through this because sometimes if your income can support your uh, income property, right, without rental income, then they could omit those tax returns altogether for the purposes of buying a property. Uh, the other thing, too, is for each investment property you have, you have to have three months reserves, okay? That's principal, interest, tax, and insurance. Uh, I need a copy of a mortgage statement, tax bill, homeowner's insurance, and a copy of a lease, uh, another thing important to note is that equity in a property does not count towards reserves, nor can you get gift funds uh, as reserves, right? What you can use as reserves is a 401k, TSP. We can use 100% of the value on that. And you can use checking savings, money market accounts. No cash is allowed. So you have cash under the mattress. You cannot use that. Put it in a bank. Uh, lenders will look back two months of bank statements. So if you had deposited a hundred thousand in cash four months ago or three months ago, a lender wouldn't even know it and they would use that as reserves per the VA guidelines. So please guys hit the like and subscribe button. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions or have any ideas around video content. Would love to do them for you. Talk to you soon.